hey, thank you so much for watching and listening today. Of course, I want you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That would be fantastic or podcast, whatever it is. But we have really, really great content. And of course, we really try to accentuate Jesus, especially, hello, this month, Jesus uh, on my YouTube channel and podcast. So thank you so much. And we're starting a new series every year this year. And at this time of year, I always do like a series called Finding Jesus, Looking for Jesus. So kind of the elf on the shelf idea, but a little bit more um, helpful, I would say, than just the elf on the shelf. It's Jesus in our hearts, right? Jesus in our daily living, Jesus on your shoulder, all kinds of places where we can find and experience Jesus. So this series, we're gonna do something interesting because I think sometimes we don't always think of finding Jesus in certain contexts. So for example, if it's dark around you, if there's darkness, if there's discouragement, if there's bad news, you know, the Omicron stuff, or, you know, uh, Christmas brings all kinds of bills, you know, and if you're an introvert, it's all kinds of parties. So that's can be, you know, if you're an extrovert, you're like, woo, sweet. But, but really sometimes we have uh, dark seasons in our life. We receive dark news. And is it possible to find Jesus, experience Jesus in things that, could be dark, could be discouraging, could seem hopeless, could be um, scary even. And I'm bringing this to your attention because I think that's very, very possible. In fact, I would propose to you that this is one of the first experiences of Jesus coming into human skin was in a very dark situation, discouraging, hopeless, fearful, scary situation. And I bring it to your attention because I think that's what happened with Mary. Mary, Jesus' mother, because we read in uh, Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38, Gabriel the angel appears to Mary and he says, hey, favored one, you're going to have a baby. Now, 3,000 years later, 2,000 years later, we're all like, woohoo, it's Jesus, that's fantastic. But if you're in her sandals at that time, I don't think that was super exciting news. You're going to have a baby. Why? Because she's not married, right? She's about 12, 14, probably 14 years old. So young teenager, teenage girl, and an angel appears to her and says, you're going to be pregnant. So in this culture, at this time in history, she lives in Israel. So there's Jewish traditions and legalistic parameters. And in this law, in this season era, history, country, If you were found to be pregnant out of wedlock or you had sex out of wedlock, adultery or whatever, legally they could drag you before the court and stone you, kill you for your infraction or whatever. And so when she receives this news, I mean, 3000 years later, we think it's fantastic. And, but I'm not so sure in those few seconds that she was all like super excited. I think she was thinking as you know, probably an average 14 year old girl, finding out she's going to be pregnant out of wedlock and without having sex, she probably had some concerns. (laughs) Uh, What do I tell my mom and dad? How do I keep from getting stoned, accused? How do I keep from being ostracized, you know, excluded? This is, I don't know that I think this is such great news, but Gabriel goes on and and helps her, helps her to understand at this time, your your cousin Elizabeth is also pregnant and you can go and hang out with her. Um, and that was probably super helpful to Mary because I think as she was around Elizabeth, who was married and elderly, and it was a supernatural pregnancy, I think Mary could watch and understand and help and learn from Elizabeth this whole pregnant journey. Um, I think it was not safe for her really potentially to be with her family and in her village just because of the nature of the legalistic consequences to getting pregnant out of wedlock. So I think it's interesting because sometimes we receive dark news. Maybe you've had a bad health diagnosis. Maybe you've had a discouraging semester in college and you're like, I might lose my scholarship. Maybe you're watching and you're like, I don't know, I'm struggling in, in some of my marriage stuff or my relationships. Maybe you're thinking about your money and the poor decisions you made and you're like, or bills, all kinds of stuff. We can all have dark news, dark experiences, but even in the midst of that, let's appreciate that Jesus is the light of the world. 
And I think it's really powerful because in essence, Mary, when she became pregnant with Jesus, the light of the world was in her. And she could carry the light of the world, birth the light of the world. And I think also learn to trust that God can illuminate darkness when it seems impossible. So I just encourage you that no matter what's happened in your life, whatever darkness there might be, whatever discouraging news you might have, whatever might be confusing or unclear to you, that Jesus is our light. He is the light of the world. And in this season, this is a season when we recognize and celebrate Jesus. And there's all the festivities that go with it and, and all the parties and the concerts and the music and the decorating and you know the cooking and the wrapping, all the stuff, all of it. Let's remember that we keep Jesus central, that he is our light and that we invite him to illuminate dark areas in our life, to bring light, to bring clarity, to bring hope, to bring even just buoyancy, you might feel heavy and down, but Jesus can bring buoyancy, can help lift us up, raise us. So no matter what, let's, instead of focusing on the darkness and the absence and the discouraging news and, and all the deficiencies, all this stuff, let's continue to keep Jesus central. And let's keep our eyes on Jesus because as we do, he gives us light. He gives us hope. He directs our paths. He leads us because he's our good shepherd, leads us in the path of righteousness and, and provision. He is good for us. So thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Of course, you want to hit the notification bell right there because that lets you know when we put up new content. And here's a question for you to think about. What in your life seems dark right now? And I just answer that in the comments there. What in your life seems dark? I really appreciate the comments and feedback. I've had a lot of people comment on some of the interviews I've done. I like the feedback on the food you've liked. And it's just fun to hear your thoughts and, and your feedback and input on, on some of these questions. So what is dark in your life? Maybe it's your money. Maybe it's, I don't know, your health. Maybe, maybe you live in Alaska and it's like permanently dark up there. That's a place, right? I mean, that's kind of bizarre too. But of course, we're going to finish with a very, very powerful joke because these are magnificent in the fullest sense of the word. You know, I'm saying this always tongue in cheek. So here's one that's a little bit sketchy, but I think you'll still like it. Did you hear about the town that legalized weed and banned alcohol? The town residents were left high and dry. <laughs> legalized weed and banned alcohol. They were left high and dry. I know you're like, that is so pathetic. I know, but next week it'll be so much better. Stay tuned for our second episode in this series. Thanks so much.